Real Sociedad Sporting Director Roberto Alabi, who is leaving the Spanish club at the end of the season, is believed to be Mikel Arteta's preference to replace Edu. Arsenal are hoping Gabriel Megales will be fit to return against Everton on Saturday. The player has missed Arsenal's last three games with a hamstring injury, but is close to returning despite not being risked in Arsenal's 3-1 win over Monaco last night, reports uh, Sammy Motbell. And to be fair with you, Mikel Arteta did allude to him becoming a person permanent fixture in the Brazilian national team as a potential overload for um, injury and why he's here. Allegedly, Thomas Partey's future at Arsenal is uncertain with no significant progress made on a new contract. So let's see exactly what has been said, people, in the column of Sammy Motbell. I mean, Dan Ashworth is still, I guess, being linked with Arsenal. I'm pretty sure if I scroll the way down, there you have it. Recent links to the sporting director vacancy at Arsenal stem from his long-standing relationship with the Gunners managing director Richard Garlick. The pair worked together at West Brom and have remained close while their careers have taken different paths. Garlic's powerhouse at Arsenal has grown in recent weeks following the departure of the club's previous sporting director, Edu, and he'll have influential role in deciding who replaces the Brazilian, who is set to take a global position with Nottingham Forest owner Evangelos Marankis' group of clubs. Garlic Sway would certainly work in Ashworth's favour should he have designs on a senior position at the Emirates. As things stand, one of Ashworth's main competitors in the race to replace Edu is Real Sociedad Sporting Director Roberto Alabi, who would be my preference, who is leaving the Spanish club at the end of the season. Alabi is believed to be manager Mikel Arteta's preference for the position. Alabi and Arteta already have an existing relationship. Alabi signed the current Arsenal boss as a player in 2004 during his Bell as Real Sociedad a manager. Fair enough, people. No progress made on Partey extension. Arsenal midfielder Thomas Partey's future is uncertain with no significant progress made on a new contract and just 20 days until he can sign elsewhere. Obviously, January he can sign a pre-agreement. The Ghana International has been one of the club's players of the season so far, staying injury-free to play a key role in Mikel Arteta's side. Partey's five-year deal signed when he joined for £45 million from Atletico Madrid in 2020, and I think he's made just over 100 appearances for Arsenal, which shows his historic injury issues, although you look back at our first title challenge, you look back at this season, he, so far he's been superb. You look at, for all his injuries last season, when the running came, he was playing. Um, and such, he can sign a pre-contract with overseas clubs from January the 1st. The fact Arsenal are in the market to sign a new central midfielder most likely in the summer and have begun identifying targets indicates that Partey could leave the club at the end of the season, though Jorginho's deal is also due to expire in July. Would you not keep Thomas Partey or would you not? I don't know because I think Jorginho is almost an extension of the coaching staff. In terms of ability, Partey would be a good player. If we could bring in another number eight, have Rice, have Moreno, Part A still in and amount in and amongst the team fair play. I personally believe, you know, again, maybe I'm just an ignorant fan, but it would be nice if Arsenal have the replacements for the replacements before they need replacing. And what I mean by that is you have a younger part, a, exactly the kind of same player, but a younger model or a different profile. Not too sure. But yeah, we're going to have to deal with all of this in the summer. Partey will turn 32 before next season and sources have indicated there is no major urgency at Arsenal to nail down Partey's future despite his re-emergence this season. Maybe they want to see continued fitness. Maybe Partey is always going to be moved on. We know we've tried to get him off the wage bill and sell him to Saudi the last two summers. Who knows? Would you give a Partey a new deal? Because right now it looks like the right thing to do. But being devil's advocate, how many times have we seen a player, whether it's at Arsenal or elsewhere, get it, play for a new contract, play extremely well, get that new deal, and then it's more of the same. He'll be 32 next season, which isn't the end of the world, but, you know, you look at the wages he's on, you know, if you get rid of him, potentially Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko, that's significant resources freed up. And you can make a case of several players, whether it's age, injury, lack of first team football, etc., leaving the club in the summer and we've probably got a lot to do in terms of outcomings i believe we need an eight i'd love a striker i'd love another versatile forward unpopular opinion i'd love another defender and we probably need to sign a goalie or two um so who knows people He's one of the club's biggest earners with a pay package worth around 200 grand per week, but his career in North London has been beset by injuries. On the topic of injuries, meanwhile, the Gunners are hoping key defender Gabriel Magalhães will be fit to return against Everton on Saturday. Big up, Kivio, you've stepped in and done well, but clearly we're missing Gabriel. 
Gabriel has missed Arsenal's last three games with a hamstring injury, but is close to returning despite not being risked in the 3-0 victory over Monaco on Wednesday night. Shout out Kivio, Lewis Skelly, etc. So we'll have to see. Is there anything else Arsenal related here? Big up Lewis Skelly as well. He's doing his thing, got his first Champions League start, did what he needed to do. And the 18-year-old has all... The, the world at his feet and it's down to him to just keep going. It's nice to be sat third in the Champions League table. Obviously, there's still two games to play. We still need to get the job done against Dynamo Zagreb and obviously Girona, but hopefully we get that done. We still are being linked with Nico Williams. I'm not sure if that happens in January. We're still being linked with Mohamed Kudus, who apparently has an 80 million release clause. I would not be against triggering that in January, whether that's possible is another thing we've been linked with a bunch of players you know in the last week it's all been nico williams if not that it's adamola lookman and then it's kudas every now and again the kunya rumors pop up uh we've been relinked with vlahovic you know which again daily do some videos are back i don't know if arsenal are gonna be prepared to splash the cast in january i'd love to know if you look think we need to sign players or not need to sign players you know we've had a lot of injuries you know injuries excluded we've we did not do everything we need to do in the summer, but there's been injuries around several players. Gabriel's missed a couple of weeks. Partey's literally missed a couple of weeks. Moreno's had like two different injuries. Zinchenko's picking up knocks. Califuri's picking up knocks. Benjamin White is a long-term absentee. Odegaard's not been a thing. Tini, while he probably wasn't in the thinking, has had knocks. Zinchenko has had knocks. And I'm probably, I'm definitely missing out. Gabriel Jesus has had knocks. I'm definitely missing out a player. So... Yeah, we we injuries are a thing. They happen. It is what it is. I'd love us to sign people, but January is kind of a reactive market. You know, players are reacting to a lack of football, to maybe not seeing eye to eye with a manager. There's obviously contracts running down and fire sales. Obviously, for me, where you look at the Adam Oda Lookmans, the Kudases, the Nico Williams, who, to be fair, does have a release clause, the Vlahovic's, regardless of if these clubs are open to selling them or not, would they want to do business in January? And would you have to maybe overpay? And if so, how much does that affect if it does the summer moving forward? It'd be nice to address something in January, but we've got what we've got until, until at the very least, January the 1st. <laughs>